Welcome to this brand new episode of the Beach Side Podcast. I'm your host, HD of the BSB. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Enable notifications to receive all the updates from all the episodes on the, the podcast and the other content on the channel. Follow us on social media, the links in the description and the usernames on the screen. And listen to the podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform of your choosing. As always, join us for more, and you're always welcome on the episode. Let's kick off this episode by talking about the action from Wednesday, of course, across the board in the world. We start from the FIFA Club World Cup. The two matches were played. The first match was the fifth and sixth place between Monterrey and Al Jazeera, and it was Monterrey going out victorious 3 to 1 to gain the fifth place in the tournament. And in the other semi final, it was Chelsea going to the final to meet Palmeiras uh, after beating Al Hilal Saud from Saudi Arabia 1 0. It was a pretty Pretty, um, you know, tenacious and very audacious performance from Al Halal. Very commandable, really, putting Chelsea under pressure, especially in the second half. Uh, moving on to the Premier League, um, four games took place yesterday from round 24. Manchester City expectedly and predictably breezed past Brentford 2 0. Uh, it was a bit tough of a game to break Brentford down until the 40th minute when Riyad Mahrez got the opening goal from the penalty spot after Sterling drew the penalty. And the second half, Kevin De Bruyne added the second goal from a goalkeeper spillage uh, for Brentford, making it 2 0, of course, and putting the gap between them and the closest challenger to 12 points, of course, in a big asterisk that Liverpool have a game in hand as well. Norwich City drawn against Crystal Palace 1-0 at home. Norwich opened the scoring in the first minute from team by Timo Puki, and then Wilfried Zaha equalised in the 60th minute in a beautiful goal, by the way, to give Crystal Palace the points, of course. Uh, Newcastle, no, New, Crystal Palace now are 25 points at 13th, while Norwich are still in the relegation zone and missed on the opportunity to go above Newcastle, uh, staying on 18th place with 17 points, but some crazy games took place in the Premier League as well. Tottenham hosted Southampton, and despite uh, Tottenham um, taking the lead early on in the 18th minute, thanks to a, uh, an own goal from Jan Bednarek, Armand Dubroja equalised quickly for Southampton after five minutes. Jon Minson gave the lead for Tottenham again inside 70 minutes, of course, prom- uh, prompting Antonio Conte to go and try and shut Ralph Hasenhutl for some reason, but then I think he was about to shut up as Southampton scored two goals in quick succession to take the game to a 3-2 lead. Steven Bukvan had a goal that was cancelled late on, which sent Conte absolutely crazy. Um, a missed opportunity for Spurs to uh, to really get close to that top four spot and to go one point behind uh, West Ham, of course, with the games that they have in hand. That could have been an opportunity to uh, gain some serious ground. And in the Villa Park, Aston Villa defeated Leeds United or drawn against Leeds United. Three all in a brilliant game, particularly the first half, was absolutely breathless. 3-2 it was in that first half. Leeds United actually took the lead thanks to Daniel James in the ninth minute. Then Philip Coutinho put on a masterclass of performance in the last 15 minutes of that first half, scoring a goal to equalise and, of course, assisting twice for Jakob Ramsey, who had a brace on his own. Leeds uh, equalised or scored the second before the end of the first half, thanks to Daniel James again before Diego Rente equalised in the 63rd minute sharing the points for the two sides it was a brilliant game to watch really Aston Villa stay at 11th with 27 points while Leeds are 15th with 23 um, in Coppa Italia and of course Milan played Lazio in the second of the quarterfinals in that competition, Milan completely routed Lazio 4-0. It was not even close, really, for most of the game. Olivier Giroud scored a brace after Rafael Leao's opener in the 24th minute, 40, 41st and the 46th minute in the first half. Um, Milan scored the, third, the second and the third goal to basically settle the game since the first half. And all that happened in the second was basically formalities until Frank Kessier managed to make it 4-0. They booked their place in the semi-final where they're going to meet Inter Milan again, the side that they faced in the derby uh, on the weekend, of course with the other quarterfinals being Atalanta and Fiorentina, as well as Juventus playing as a solo, and the winners of each game will face each other in the semi-final of the Coppa Italia. And finishing off the action from Wednesday, the Coppa del Rey, uh, first semi-final was played, it was Real Betis, 
facing against Rio Vallecano and Real Betis booked their place in the Copa del Rey final as they beat Rio Vallecano and came back from behind actually against Rio Vallecano 1-0 at the Estadio de Vallecas. Alvaro Garcia opened the scoring for the home side in the 5th minute but Borja Iglesias equalised in the 26th minute before William Carvalho scored the winner for Real Betis in the um, in the 68th minute. Of course, the winner of this, uh, this game, which was Real Betis, of course, will meet the winner from the second semi-final which will see Atletico Bilbao play against Valencia on Thursday. To now some weekend action. Looking forward, of course, to some of the weekend action in Europe. And we start by talking about Spain and La Liga round 24 is going to be taking place this weekend in Spain. It kicks off on Friday with Sevilla playing Elche. Cadiz Celta Vigo kicks off things on Saturday. Villarreal play Real Madrid in a very tricky game for the for the uh, for the leaders of the table. Real Vallecano host Osasuna. Atletico Madrid versus Hitafe on Saturday. Another tough game for Atletico Madrid. Deportivo Alaves on Sunday play Valencia Levante versus Real Betis. Real Sociedad versus Granada and Espanyol Barcelona. That is the uh, Barcelona derby, the Catalan derby. On Saturday and Sunday, and it is Mallorca versus Athletic Club on Monday. Uh, of course, we kick things off by talking about Sevilla on Friday, the game against Elche. After the the three draws back to back to back, which definitely set them back pretty badly in the race uh, behind Real Madrid. It's now six points on the table behind Real Madrid and definitely didn't look at convincing at all in those three games. Um, I mean, for a while they haven't been convincing now, not just, not just these three games, but I think they have been off the pace uh, for, for a while now. They don't feel exactly like a team that can challenge for a title that has a long um, sort of endurance in this title race. Um, another opportunity against Elche that should be winnable at home you know um the the differences between the second team in the in the liga and the 14th should be massive enough for Sevilla to win this game but you don't know what's happening uh of course the results that they had as of late shouldn't happen to a side like Sevilla uh, the draws that you know uh that they, they they sort of drop points in shouldn't be happening really um you know against Celta Vigo at home and coming back from that against Osasuna away from home which is as tricky as it might be, shouldn't be happening for Sevilla, as I mentioned, the squad that they have, the players that they have. Uh, they've been doing a tremendous job elsewhere, but somehow they uh, they managed to do uh, you know to, to crap the bed basically in the last three games uh, for them. Uh, big big I think big opportunity for them to really gain some ground and try and gain some ground and and move it up to three points or reduce it to three points. A momentarily before Real Madrid play Villarreal on Saturday, which transitions us, of course, to the big point, the second big point here, which is Real Madrid playing against Villarreal away from home. Now, Real Madrid, in their own right, haven't been impressive as well. Ousted of the Copa del Rey, um, you know, they they have some having some tough periods in in the league. It's not exactly um, you know the, the best period for Real Madrid before a game against PSG in the Champions League, of course, on on midweek. That's a big, big uh, situation, I think, as far as as Real Madrid are concerned. Definitely, they want to um, they, they definitely want to get things done against Villarreal with a minimum of fuss. Of course, they're still missing Karim Benzema uh, for this one. Potentially, they're going to be missing him for the PSG game, so that's going to be another problem they have to think about. I mean, they didn't look that convincing against Granada, but they still got the job done. Um, overall, they need, I think, something um, you know concrete from this game against Villarreal. I think this game against Villarreal will differ a lot in the uh, the momentum. I think for Real Madrid, both for the game against PSG and for the rest of the league. Obviously, it's not an easy game at all. Villarreal are not an easy side to be. Six on the table. Um, they're, they're really good where they can be good. I mean, the the last game between the two sides. Yes, it ended goalless of course uh, at home and the Bernabeu which is you know uh, which is a good omen as far as Villarreal are concerned because they think they will have a home advantage and they will be better off at their stadium in La Ceramica of course. Um, the other side of Madrid, Atletico Madrid play against Getafe after a bad game against Barcelona I don't see them having any solution other than winning to keep themselves in the top four race because genuinely 
it's, I mean, one of the worst title defences I've ever seen in a while from a side like, uh, from a side that won the, the title last season. Atletico Madrid as champions should have had more pizzazz. They should have had more, um, you know, oomph about them. Like, they, they should have been a side that is at least second or third on the table and not by a big margin behind the leaders at the very least, if they're going to fall behind. But they fell behind so badly that... It's really tough to see them even in the top four. Although, you know, the, the margins are pretty tiny. Two points here and one point here. Um, but definitely, a game like the, the one they had against Barcelona showed the... I'm not going to say the best and the worst, but mostly the worst about Atletico Madrid. Um, they, they seem to not know what to do with their squad, despite the fact that they have loads of players unbelievably talented. Of course, the Joao Felix situation is a whole debacle on its own. And definitely... Uh, you know, a lot of problems that Atletico should be addressing if they want to uh, get into the top four this season and continue to play in the Champions League because the damage that's going to be done by playing in the Europa League or by losing on the Champions League spots is going to be just too big, I think, at the moment for Simeone uh, to take a, a man who's been under criticism already and, you know, has been almost one foot out of the door uh, for a couple of seasons for Atletico Madrid, um, you know, since last season, probably... I mean, he saved that with winning the title, but now I don't think he has loads of solutions to save and turn his seasons around. I think the only way he can do it is by miraculously turning things around in the Champions League and winning that competition, which I don't see happening in a million years anyway. Um, speaking of their opponents last weekend, it was Barcelona. They play Espanyol away from home. And uh, it is, it's a really refreshing match that they played against Atletico Madrid last time out. It's definitely a match that showed the best of this Barcelona. You know, Dani Alves on the score sheet, Jordi Alba on the score sheet, Adama Traore with an assist. You know, getting the goals, Gavi getting a goal. It was it was genuinely a wonderful um, first half in particular, I would say, for Barcelona. Overall, a game that that shown why Barcelona can improve quickly and can you know. Uh, you know, sort of find a rhythm with those youngsters, of course, including those presence uh, of the experienced head around the team that will improve really their fortune, I would say, a lot in this starter race, uh, or this top four race, sorry, for as far as Barcelona are concerned. Definitely Xavi will take a lot of positives from that game. He conceded two goals, yes, the defence is still a work in progress, I would say, but definitely Barcelona, as far as I'm concerned, they seem to be on the right track to return, on the right track to keep uh, things, you know, uh, keep things smooth, play in the in the league and play in the Europa League and try and get the best results they can. Obviously, a top four spot in La Liga, I think, is way more important at the moment than the Europa League. But as a side quest, maybe the Europa League will be a very good achievement for Xavi as, as, as his first trophy, maybe, as a coach. Uh, who knows? And it will be a pretty, uh, pretty interesting one to look after, of course. Um, the uh, last thing about Barcelona, I would say, you know, the uh, the only problem is that maybe the financial problems will get to them somehow, or the the squad is gonna be too full of I don't know of experienced head of or or big aging players that should be offloaded. I think any any time soon, obviously. But the project I think is clear for Barcelona, and they definitely know uh, what they are doing with the team and with those youngsters at the moment and hopefully for them they will get back to the right direction very quick. And we move on now to the Bundesliga and it's going to be round 22 that's going to be taking place this weekend in the Bundesliga and it kicks off on Friday with Leipzig facing Köln of course Borussia Mönchengladbach on Saturday kick things off against Augsburg Frankfurt play Wolfsburg Freiburg host FCF Mainz uh, Goethe Firth host Hertha Berlin VfL Bochum host Bayern Munich Champions and Bar Leverkusen play against Stuttgart that is on Saturday on Sunday it is an interesting one between Union Berlin and Borussia Dortmund uh, as well as Hoffenheim playing against Armenia Bellefield um, I'm really running out of words to, to talk about the Bundesliga. And I know it sounds boring, Farmers League, blah, blah, blah. And it definitely, you know, doesn't pay the Bundesliga in the best of lights. Now, obviously, no spoilers alert really here. Bayern Munich are going to be winning the title in the th in the 10th time in a row. And that is, that is sad in a way for a neutral because 
yes, I'm a Bayern fan, I'm a biased fan. I want team I want my team to dominate and to win always, but it did kind of takes the, 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 the shine of the Bundesliga a little bit. The last decade of the Bundesliga action hasn't been exactly uh, you know the best image or the best marketing to the Bundesliga. And listen, this is this isn't a long argument about the the Farmers League and it and if if it is a valid argument or not, because we can say that about the Serie A for the last decade or so that has been dominated by Juve. We can say that about the Premier League that out of the last ten editions, City have won like six of them. It, it is it's definitely a weird sort of adjective or an, or an argument to throw at the Bundesliga, but you can see where some people can come from. I mean. Um, you can say that, yes, Bayern have been strengthening themselves and the other teams have been um, weakened or somehow. I mean, there's loads of uh, theories, loads of arguments that people are trying to share and try to talk about when it comes to the Bundesliga. But I think the, the, sh- the sure thing is, is that it's still an entertaining league. It's still a very exciting league to watch. Not in terms of competition necessarily, but I think the matches, the goals, the players, loads of players come to the Bundesliga and then go to to bigger, greener pastures, I would say. Um, I mean, and, and definitely also you can measure that on the European level. The, the, the German teams are not exactly successful when it comes to Europe at the moment, uh, aside from, from Bayern Munich, of course. So the, the genuine, the general image, I would say, about the Bundesliga is definitely one of uh, you know, one of sort of boredom of the status quo and people just wanting Bayern to just, you know, lose the league and, and relinquish their grip on the on the Bundesliga. But anyway, some interesting fixtures, of course, taking place on uh, in, in this weekend. Leipzig against Köln, direct head-to-head competition on the table. It's going to be a big chance for one of them that could see them get into the top four. This could see Köln if victorious, get into the top four and overleap uh, Union Berlin to become fourth on the table, which is going to be massive for for Köln um, th- this season. They've been doing a tremendous job under, under Stefan Baumgart, and definitely uh, a victory against Leipzig is going to be massive on 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 loads of occasions, not just um, in terms of getting the, the the fourth spot or, or something, but it also would improve their momentum heading into the rest of the season uh, because you know. Very, very big difference between where they were last season, where they were fighting to stay in the in the top flight, and this season where they really, really seem like a side that genuinely could get some European football. Next season, they could compete for that. Leipzig, after a bad start for the season, they turn things around under Domenico Tedesco, and they're winning some games. They're getting into the form. Uh, you know, they're, they're sort of dusting off the, the first half of the season in particular. Um, you know, and, and definitely going in the right direction, I would say, to maybe get a Champions League spot by the end of it, because now I think they become sort of a stale stalwarts of the Champions League. They're they're very familiar with that competition now at the moment. Bruce Amjing lad back um against Augsburg. I mean, I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe saying it, but you know. I mean, two years ago, Borussia Mönchengladbach, or, or a year ago, Borussia Mönchengladbach were in the Champions League alongside Real Madrid in the same group and Inter Milan, and they were going like neck and neck with those two teams and and getting points of uh, and getting points of Real Madrid and getting points of Inter. But this season, they've fallen so bad of the uh, of the rail. They really, really fallen back. And at the moment, they play against a side that they they they're separated by one point on the table. Mönchengladbach at 13, Augsburg at 16th, and if and if Mönchengladbach lose, obviously they will go down even harder in the table. Things are not looking really good for for Hütter at the moment with Mönchengladbach, and definitely Augsburg will try and pounce on any chance that they find to to beat that side. Um, Frankfurt play against Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg finally defeated Grotte Firth and finally got a win after a long series of of losses against uh, against almost any opponent in the Bundesliga. Wolfsburg finally got out of the relegation zone and uh, of the of the nearabouts although it's still pretty tight. I mean, if you look at the table, there's five sides who could legitimately be relegated uh, you know uh, from like the the 12th place from the 11th place to the 16th place, uh, it's only three points of difference. And if you look also at the uh, the sides from 10th, 
to uh, to fifth or the fourth on the table, there's only four points separating those those um, those sides from fourth to tenth. So it's pretty tight in terms of the mid table European spots, you know, Europa League spots, Conference League spots, and also the relegation zone is pretty tight as well. So there is some excitement to be found in the Bundesliga anyway. Um, but as I mentioned, the game of Wolfsburg finally after victory against Greta Firth last weekend, they go to a game against Frankfurt who are in a warm position on the table, 31 points, surefire not going to be relegated, Not nothing bad is going to happen to them, but obviously they're going to look for more, and they're going to look for getting up further up the table, because as you mentioned just, uh, just minutes ago, it is pretty tight on the table, so Frankfurt will try and take advantage, try and get to the top four spots, and guarantee themselves a, at least a Europa League spot, a competition in which they became really, really familiar in the last couple of years. Freiburg will try and continue their great season against Mainz, although Mainz in their own right also have some legit, I would say, ambitions about getting into some European spots. Um, you know, the, the season, you know, they, as I'm under Bo Svensson, they continue to be really, really, really good at the moment. And they definitely uh, will try their best to uh, to beat Freiburg, a side that has really been impressive uh, so far and deserve a place in Europe next season. They deserved it last season, they didn't get it, but they deserve it, I think, this season as well. Greta Firth play against Hertha Berlin, and on Saturday, VFL Bochum play against the Bayern München. I think a game that Bayern need to win. Uh, they have a game against, of course, Salzburg in the midweek in the Champions League. And, of course, that game, I think, is pretty easy to, to tell that Bayern Munich will beat Salzburg. But definitely, a game against VfL Bochum is no slouch as well. They cannot relinquish any lead by any you know, even single points. They can't even drop two points here. They can't even dare to draw against VfL Bochum. Um, you know, it can happen, obviously. They can drop points and they can lose. A day off is predictable for, for Bayern. It can happen, but definitely, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, this game, you know, should be a bit of a, a chance to rotate, to change some players, to try and test uh, the waters, obviously, for the current squad of, of Bayern Munich. Another Bayern that's going to be playing by a Leverkusen is going to be playing Stuttgart on Saturday. They're continuing their strong showings by Leverkusen uh, this season and they would want to uh, improve even their tally even more, get closer to Borussia Dortmund of course and try and get that second spot. I mean it won't really make a difference because both are Champions League spots and in the end None of none of them, none of those two sides are going to take the title of Bayern. But I think, as far as momentum is concerned, finishing second is going to be way better. I think of a finish than just finishing third behind Bayern, like fourteen or fifteen points as it stands at the moment. Borussia Dortmund, as you mentioned, they play against Union Berlin on Sunday. Um, a very interesting one for uh, for Dortmund, for uh, you know, for the current for their current coach, of course, Marco Rosa. After losing five against Bayer Leverkusen last week, and the pressure is all on them now. Uh, to, to defeat Union Berlin, not just to redeem themselves from that loss, but also to keep behind Bayern in a way, because the title race is, I think, long past gone now for Borussia Dortmund, and they just need to keep the pace and finish as a close second, or as a distant second, to be fair. That is probably the best finish they would look forward to um, for, the, for this season, and of course, as, um, as the last game of the weekend will be Hoffenheim versus Armenia Bellafield should be a sure win for Hoffenheim as well, who also have been doing some tremendous job this season, and they could still get a European spot, depending a uh, Europa League, Conference League, or even a Champions League spot if they make a good uh, late run. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I was a boy with HD the PSP. Like, share, comment on the YouTube version, subscribe to the YouTube channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates. Follow us on social media, the usernames on the screen, and the links in the description. Listen to the podcast on Spotify, Google Podcast, or any other platform. And until tomorrow's episode, I'm your host, HD of the PSP. Take care and goodbye.